welcome to another video lecturer in this video lecturer we are going to discuss about the aspiration effect aspiration effect is concerned with the design of the spur proper designing of the gate system is essential to have a effective filling and directional solidification to get the sound casting let's consider a spur which is having cylindrical in shape when we allow the molten metal to pour from pore basing to the spur in a free manner it will follow a v type of the what you call flow now there is a gap is there between the walls of the cylinder and the metal flow which leads to the vacuum pocket as we know the sound with sand which is around the spur is a permeable material the gases and the airs which were developed because of the baking of the organic material present in the mold generate the gases so these gases will enter into the metal stream so this leads to the defective casting so in order to achieve the sound casting the pressure inside the spur should not be less than the atmospheric pressure so this effect we call it as a aspiration effect let's try to design the shape of the spur so that we can avoid the aspiration effect let's consider a spur here there are three different points which we are considering in the spur one at the beginning of the pouring basin second at the intersection of pour basin pouring basin and the spur third one is the bottom point of the spur let's try to understand the different parameters which are required to design the spur let's say that the pressure which is available at the point 1 we call it as a p1 and the pressure which is acting on it it is the atmospheric pressure similarly pressure at point 2 is p2 so we know that one if the pressure goes below the atmospheric pressure the gases which are generated because of the baking of the organic material will enter into the spur stream so we want the pressure at point to be atmosphere similarly we never let the pressure below the atmosphere hence again the pressure at the point 3 is also to be at least minimum to the atmosphere or more than the atmosphere let's say that one the velocity at point 1 we call it as a v1 velocity at point 2 we call it as a v2 and similarly the velocity at the point 3 we call it as a v3 point we need to apply the continuity equation and the bernoulli's equation in order to get the laminar flow of the molten metal in order to avoid the aspiration effect so we need to define the datum here so let's the datum is considered at the point 3 itself so hence the datum at the point 3 we call it as a z3 which is equal to 0 the datum head at the point 2 that is z2 is is equal to the height of the spur that is hs and the datum head at the point 1 that is z1 is nothing but it is a summation of the height of the cup and the height of the spur so which we call it as a ht which is is equal to hc plus hs let's try to apply the continuity equation at the beginning let's try to apply the continuity equation at the point 1 and the point 2 according to the continuity equation the total quantity which is flowing through the system it should be equal that is q is equal to a1 
v1 which is equal to a2 v2 now we try to apply the bernoulli's equation again at the point 1 and the 2 1 and 2 bernoulli's equation says that one the total summation of the pressure head velocity head and datum head is always remains the same it means the total energy at the point that is pressure energy pressure a head we can call it p1 by rho g then velocity h is v1 square by 2g plus datum head that is z1 which is equal to p2 by rho z plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 so we know the pressure acting at point 1 is atmospheric and E1 at point 2 is atmospheric 1. The initial velocity is thought to be 0. So this term is also becomes get cancelled. The Z1 is nothing but HT. So which is, is equal to V2 square by 2G. Z2 is HS. So we can write that V2 square by 2G is equal to HT. Now I can write as HC plus HS minus HS. So both get cancelled. So we get that one V2 is equal to under root of 2G HC. So similarly, we can apply the Bernoulli's equation at point 2 and 3. When we apply it again, it is P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g plus Z2 which is equal to P3 by rho g plus v3 square by 2g plus z3 again the pressures are same so both terms will be get cancelled now the v2 is equal to we know that it is under root of 2g hc so try to submit the value here 2g HC divided by 2G. Z2 is nothing but it is HS which is equal to V3 square by 2G. HZ3 is equal to 0. These 2G, 2G get cancels. Now we can write that V3 square by 2G is is equal to HT plus HS we know that which is, is equal to HT so hence the V3 is, is equal to under root of 2G HT so this is another important equation for the design of the spear if you apply the continuity equation between the point 2 and the 3 Again, the quantity Q is, is equal to A2 V2, which is, is equal to A3 V3. So, if we take A2 by A3, which is, is equal to V3 by V2. So, we know the values of these, that is under root of 2G HT divided by under root of 2g hc so this leads to what we call it as a a2 by a3 whole square is equal to ht by hc so which is nothing but which is a parabolic equation 
Hence, in order to avoid the aspiration effect, the spur should be in the form of a par parabolic curve. But it is difficult to obtain it in the mold. Normally, we go for the tapered spur. This equation also leads to a simple relation that is HT is equal to HC plus HS. So HT is always greater than HC. So hence A2 is greater than A3. It means the area at point 2 must be greater than the area at point 3 which leads to the what you call tapered shape of the spew. So these relations will help you in solving the numerical problems and design of the spewer for the given gating system. Thank you for watching this video.